Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the first session uh, of uh, the Statistical Physics uh, Conference. Uh, I'm told just straight to go to the business. So let's begin with uh, the first speaker, uh, who is uh, Pradeep Kumar Mohanty, and he'll be talking about continuously varying critical exponents. Just uh, a brief rules about the sessions for those of you who are new. Uh, 12 minutes for the talk, three minutes for the question and answers. In between, during the talk, uh, if there are any questions during this session, I welcome you to ask, but please keep it brief. Uh, uh, good morning. And uh, just because it's a fast talk, let me start, uh, take 30 minutes just to, 30 seconds, just to say uh, thanks to the organizers of this conference. Or the meeting has uh, become like an event. So, you know, many of us feel like, you know, we miss it if you don't go there. Right? So it's a, so thanks to the organizers for, uh, for this. So I will be talking uh, about uh, continuous variation of critical exponents beyond weak universality. Uh, so I start uh, thanking my collaborators, experimental collaborators in this uh, project. Uh, Nazir Khan, Arindam, Nidyo, Prabhat Mondal. Uh, these are students of Prabhat Mondal uh, who did this, uh, uh, this part of the experiment. And Prasanji Sarkar, who is a student of Prabhat Mondal, but working as a college in a college somewhere in Sri <clears throat> So universality is a concept which we know uh, well. Probably, you know, we know that phase transitions uh, at the phase transition, the critical exponents and the scaling functions are universal. And uh, this is kind of this concept is as old as 1945. You know, this is the first one of the first thing which is known. Although it was done, uh, in, in, this was known in, in not known in the name of universality. This was kind of you know in kind of state uh, uniqueness of state state functions. So, <clears throat> so now the current understanding of uh, critical phenomena uh, is based on a renormalization group. So critical points are fixed points of renormalization group and they're defined by relevant operators and a set of relevant operators define an effective theory. Okay. So critical exponents are the scaling dimension of the relevant operator. And uh, if you have a fixed point, if, it, if you add addi extra additional irrelevant operators, then the fixed point remain there and then you know it's the, the the theory is described by the same effective theory, and these all these operators set of real, irrelevant operators make a basin of attraction. So uh, the critical exponents are unchanged, and it defines a universality class. So addition of a relevant operator takes the fixed point to another fixed point, flow to a new fixed point, and uh, uh, this is also you know so basically this is described by another set of set of numbers critical uh, exponents. Addition of a marginal operator. If you have a marginal operator which doesn't grow or shrink with uh, RG operation, then you have a line of fixed points. So each fixed point is defined, you know, is, is described by the value of the marginal operator called lambda. So the continuous variation, you get a continuous variation of exponent. So, <coughs> so now uh, this, this is all fine, but all we know, please correct me if someone, uh, you know, can correct me here that observed continuous variations are mostly in, in, in certain types. Okay. Whatever we know, continuous variation of different contexts, are a, you know, there is a type there, so that I wanted to describe here. So, eight, uh, so one of the first observation of continuous variation, which is, is a clean example, is eight vertex model, which is solved by Baxter, introduced by Sutherland, and you know, and uh, so this is the one, and then Cardinoff, who uh, actually find the marginal operator for this. So now, uh, this uh, what you call eight vertex model can be mapped to a two layer two layer Ising spin. So basically, you have a it's a two dimension. J is the neighbor. So you have a you know spin one in you know, interacting Ising interaction. There is Ising interaction here, and then there is a four four spin coupling lambda. So with this lambda, very if you vary lambda, then the the the, the exponent para to ferromagnetic transition the exponent very continuously. And uh, so if you look at this, so there is only one parameter j by lambda by j or j by lambda. So what you define is p is e to the power minus 4j q equal to that. So if lambda equal to zero, which means this line, so basically lambda equal to zero means p equal to q square this line, and j equal to zero means p equal to q this line. So lambda equal to zero to j or zero to one, this is the continuous variation what you find, and this particular model has uh, few phases, like you know this is ferro and this is para, where uh, one of the spins uh, takes you know, finite magnetization, 
And there is also extra additional phase where sigma tau is non-zero, expectation value is non-zero, but sigma and tau itself are, non are zero. So the eight vertex model corresponds to, corresponds to this regime, uh, uh, this regime here, where you have only ferro to para transition and a continuous variation starting from here to here. And so basically if you change lambda, this, uh, the, the exponents vary continuously. And that's very unusual of the critical point. That doesn't happen in Ising model if you add a second nearest neighbor of this. This was done in 93 by this particular model we studied. And uh, so basically critical exponent of uh, this are uh, derived by, you know, by the extract itself and then um, by through the marginal operator uh, Kadanov. And so these are the exponents. You can see that beta is one minus lambda by eight and uh, you can read that. So now if you put lambda equal to zero, then these exponents reduces to Ising, Ising exponent. Beta is one by eight, mu is one, alpha is zero, and this is the Ising exponent in PD. So for lambda equal to zero, this is the these are the set of exponents. For lambda greater than zero, you can you you know these these all these exponents vary. So this that this except delta and eta, other exponent vary with lambda, but the ratios still remain same as the value of Ising. So basically, beta by mu is two minus alpha by nu, gamma by nu, eta and delta, the values of those remain same as beta zero by gamma zero, two minus alpha zero by nu zero. So this is the, you know, this is, these are universal, same as 2D Ising model. So looking at that, there was a proposal in 1974 that this is called weak universality. So what it says is that instead of exponents, the exponent ratios are rather universal. So that's called weak universality. So what we <coughs> what we want to say is that the known continuous variations are mostly within this family, what you call weak universality. So there are a huge number of you know this is not an exhaustive list, but this is the some 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 set of some some list, and uh, I just wanted to point out here is that you know on of you know ten is here. So this is the model studied uh, 2012. Mm, on of is of course are there. So basically, if you take even if you take an IG model with ferro first nearest neighbor ferro and second nearest neighbor anti ferro then also you can get a continuous variation in 2D, two dimensions. The same kind of continuous variation, what you call weak universal. Also there is a model called Bloom-Campbell model, so where it's, it's a spin stakes plus zero and plus minus one values, three values, and the Hamiltonian is this. In this also you can get a continuous variation of exponents. Some of them are numeric. Um, Probably that, yes. So now uh, you have certain ex ex exceptions to what you called uh, continuous period, you know, this weak universality. Okay. So this is one of the old article in 79, I suppose. 79, I forgot. So there is a strong coupling QED. You have a, uh, you have a Lagrangian and uh, so there is this, what you call gaze, gaze field, is there is a gaze coupling here. And what you find is, that, so there are two parameters, E0 and G0. So you put Q equal to, Q is same as E0 square, and there is a G0 here. So you have a, you have a symmetric phase to a broken symmetric phase. And in this one, if you find what is, a, so this is basically, this is the basic point, what you call the parent universality from here, it, it deviates. And then you have these exponents here. So if you put alpha Q equal to zero, it means E0 equal to zero. Then you have the point here, which is given by uh, these exponents. And if you change it, it goes like that. But you look, look at this one. So here beta by nu still changes. It's not constant. So this is the first one of the examples where the ratio of exponent also varies. So this is not in the weak universality class. And that was the whole, whole uh, you know, the, the, the idea or, or, the, or the claim of this work by Kondo. So this is, and there are also either, you know, probably XY model in 2D can also be fit into this kind of this category, which we discuss later. It's not, I don't want to go to the, you know, to, this is not what I want to discuss here, maybe later. So a few, so what we find is that there is a few types of continuous variation. Most of them do weak universality, and there are only some exceptions. And the question is why? So what we try to find is the, is this one, that only a few, few continuous variations are consistent with scaling, okay? So along with this uh, universality, the parent, what you call the basic universality, you have scaling laws, 
And if you look at combine the scaling laws, it goes like uh, two minus alpha, this, this is the scaling law. Okay. So this has to be satisfied. So now you can see that gamma and delta can take, you know, depending on how gamma and delta vary, these exponents can vary uh, accordingly. So gamma can, gamma varies and delta fixed, that can be a scenario A. Delta varies, gamma is fixed. And so, and the both gamma and delta vary. Okay, so this is one when gamma varies, you just have a weak universality. And when delta varies, gamma is fixed, we have strong coupling QD, the example I give, it is, this two just directly fixed there. And then both gamma and delta vary is something which we want to, I, we, this experimental scenario which I want to talk about. <clears throat> so now look at, before going to the experiment, so let us look at this, this one. So what is a generic variation which keeps this scaling law invariant? Okay, so what I do is that, you know, you just gamma goes to gamma by C and delta, this whole thing goes to AC. So this C cancels, so other things actually goes as A. So that's a continuous variation. So if you look at that, there can be different scenarios. So for example, if you want to keep gamma fixed, so you put gamma, so gamma varies, but delta fixed, then you put A equal to, A equal to lambda, sorry, A equal to lambda and C equal to, uh, C, sorry, sorry, so, so, A, so, so here there are two parameters, A and C, both A and C are functions of lambda, lambda is the marginal operator. So we have only one marginal operator here, or marginal parameter. So the parent universality is gamma equal to gamma zero, which you get, you know, at some values of some values of lambda. The parent universality you get some, for some values of lambda. Basically, a lambda is some function, c lambda is some function. Wherever they cross, you set the scales, like you know, axis is one and one. So that's the that you call lambda equal to one. So a one equal to one equal to c one. And if you put these values, a one c lambda equal to lambda, a lambda is one by lambda. You get weak universality. So basically, what you get. In case B, if you say gamma equal to gamma zero, because C is one. So if you go back, you have C equal to one. So if C equal to one, gamma equal to gamma zero, and then the rest of the things behaves exactly the way it behaves in QED, strong coupling QED. And then the third case is C lambda equal to lambda. And in this case, we have uh, this continuous variation. So it is 10 minutes or 15 minutes, three minutes more. Yeah, okay, so you have a, if you put these values, you, you, you assume that this is a still uh, a power law, and then you get this continuous variation, but once you have a continuous variation, this has to be, you know, at, you know, then, then this, this continuous variation can lead to beta equal to zero. So when beta goes to zero, you go to a multi-critical point, and at the multi-critical point, you have certain other properties as to satisfy, this is by Fisher. So what you, what you do is that, you know, you have a kappa, what you say that this kappa you do not know, this is a generic variation, and you fix kappa by this, by this constraint. And uh, so to do the, to go to the experimental scenario, we have, uh, we have a, uh, so we have a compound, what you call multi, multi ferro, uh, so, uh, mixed valent magnets. So we have uh, uh, the samarium strontium magnets. So these are, uh, this is the phase diagram, if you dope uh, this way, so basically, this is ferromagnet, this is antiferromagnet. You take the you take the system here, and this is very very interesting things happen here. So this is actually at this point, you, you have a first order phase tension. So this phase tension is first order. If you put pressure, it becomes second order. So this is very interesting one, and this is uh, particularly is very uh, you know very sensitive. These mixed valent magnets are very sensitive to chemical or external pressure. So what you what the experimentalists try to do there in in in, in Saha is basically they try to put a doping here. And uh, they find, uh, you know, so if you dope it, samarium, neodium, this, uh, you get this samarium, neodium, you do, do a neodium doping. And uh, from this, uh, this is the phase diagram. So you have, uh, you have this continuous variation and it becomes discontinuous. Somewhere here, there is a multi-critical point. And uh, this is how you measure the critical points. I don't have time to discuss, but I just wanted to say that this is the magnetization becomes zero, susceptibility also, inverse susceptibility also becomes zero here. There is something called an error plot, how you find critical points. And these are the scaling uh, behavior or the universal, universal features for different y. And finally, you have the critical exponents. So this is something like that, you know, these are the critical exponents which are listed here. And uh, so which is plotted also here. These are the critical exponents. Along with this, I have plotted the, what, we, what we want from theory. So basically, this is what uh, you get. And the continuous variance or the, uh, the, the multi-critical point occurs at lambda equal to gamma zero, which is this, which corresponds to y equal to 0.37, which is also observed here. So basically, you have a fast order transition below 0.37. And uh, I think 
And uh, so if you look at the scaling functions a little differently, all the scaling functions for different y, different doping, they can be collapsed into each other. What you call hygiene dopa. So that's where my summary is and uh, I'll take those. Any questions? The first two slides, when you read it in the Jackson Taylor model and the other. These are just plus minus one. These are classical lysing streams, the plus minus one. Plus minus. If you, that, that happens if you have two marginal operators. If you have one, if you have one, then it, you know you have to have some constraint. Yeah, here. No, if you have two exponent, two set of numbers, two other set of numbers, they can always be mapped by something, two, two numbers. But if they are connected by only one marginal parameter, that you cannot do this. So you have, so, 